you go prime minister in front of him, prime minister school. This lesson will still be will be kept with methods of limit calculations. So this lesson we are focusing on the special limit number two, but it, not just that it requires some a, a lot of methods like the variable substitution. There's also the trigonometric identities. There's also the special limit one, and also can the L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So that also includes the special limit two, which this lesson will still have two examples like last last lesson. So this lesson, the two examples, they are they are quite simple, but one is short, one is longer. So for the first question, we we'll need to solve limit x approaches to infinity bracket 1 minus e to the power of x bracket to the power of e to the power of x, right? But had you noticed that this could be? So let's add something to the question. Okay. Oops. So to the question we can add here negative we can add it. If we don't add it also can. If we don't add it that's a bit more complicated. As if you don't add it you still need to bracket and still need to cancel, but it's still the same way. We still got use the special limit too. The special limit to take in place as perfectly corresponds. And then here, perfectly negative 1. We just need to add a bracket here and then corresponds, which becomes. Because that it should be 1 over 1 over, which the denominator of the denominator becomes the numerator. So, inside there will be a E. But then straight away, you can get E to the power of negative 1, which now we don't even need a limit, which equals to 1 over E. So we're already done. We're already finished this question. It's quite simple, right? So you either like this, or you more complicated, you either still need to write that. After you write this, you still need to write negative e to the power of inverse x, blah, blah, blah. Which well, you should just write it below, okay? I said if we did not add this part and this next, the it just gonna be more complicated. Okay, it's quite similar, but out here you need to. Okay, at first still have an e x, and then here you need to times another e x, which here have a negative. Power, which this part had you notice? Okay, these two are inverse operation if there's no negative, and then which they become cancel then one. So here negative so become again e to the power negative one, which same answer. Okay, so actually this is only complicated at the part which here. You need to write the extras. Well, for this, 
The only thing you then need to write some extras and a question. Okay. So now for the second question. I don't know if they tell the first question is quite easy. So get a quick look. Okay. Now we will have the question two or else example two, which is limit x approaches to one x to the power of tangent pi over two times x, which is over here. Which the first things first. Let's check whether it's a determinable form or it's an indeterminable form. Try direct substitution. So this is just for in case. So I mean one, okay, let's first write it to the power. So here if I mean one tangent half pi to infinity. So this is the indeterminable form. 1 to the power of infinity. Actually, all these few lessons, we've been learning about the 1 to the power of infinity, right? Because we need to see what kind of indeterminable form is it. So, let's then solve it. First, if you straight away see, you should know that you... Because every time when we met 1 to the power of infinity, first thing we do, we use special limit number 2. Let's try. Which this becomes an uh, infinitesimal. And then we 1 over it. And then after that, most of all, let's see. Because at first we don't have it. Okay. So did you notice that we can put this as a denominator, which will become a cotangent? Which will be cotangent half pi complex. So now, what indeterminable form is it? Over here. Zero. Rho over zero, right? So let's continue. We made x approaches to one e to the power of x minus one over cotangent half pi times x. Like this. And then now we have two ways of solving it, right? So, you could choose either one. So, both will get the same answer, okay? So, first, what if we use one of the methods that we had learned before? No way direct substitution as there's a zero over zero here. No, nothing to factorize. Nothing to convert. Rationalization cannot because that the denom the denominator was still being wrong. Then what we use variable substitution. So variable substitution. What should we let? Let's see. If we left the cotangent, cannot, you know, the numerator will have an inverse cotangent. But what if we let the x minus 1? Let's try. Because that if you really let the cotangent, it will become an inverse cotangent and become 4. Okay. So, it's, we'll let x minus 1 which equals to y. So x equals to y plus 1. And then y's 
approaches to zero as one minus one and we sub in zero so approaches to zero as this approaches to one then after that let's sub in the y so now now of x And then, of course, still have the e. So the numerator will just become a y. The denominator cotangent is actually cosine over sine, which the sine with the, is the denominator of the denominator. We can reciprocal, which becomes the numerator. So denominator which becomes y plus 1 so here pi over 2 y plus pi over 2 here is the same But had you noticed that with the numerator, this part is sign the direct substitution sign 1, which is 1. So straight away we can take it out there and then it will just be a 1. So numerator same. The denominator let's just dump it there for a bit longer. And the next step, here comes the trigonal identities. As we need to find what is this. This, which will need to use the trigonal identity. So, for, since we need to find this right, So we need to know the all signs teacher clever. So all signs teacher. So in this case is the pi over two, right? So here pi over two. Pi over two could be all or signs. So we need to look for more clues. Oh, here's a plus, positive. So definitely it's sines. Means that it is a cosine, so it will become a negative. So if you still want to write as cosine, you can plus a pi. What I mean is the pi minus the part s when the pi minus is actually the same thing. As in one whole Okay, and then this part, we might want to change a bit of places, so that I want to do that as you notice that you can done some what I done this. Okay, so I didn't notice it. So the thing is this part. You can expand it, then both are negative. Well, plus minus the pi over 2 is pi over 2. Which becomes pi over 2. This part becomes minus pi over 2 y. Okay, then here. Have you noticed when pi over 2 minus cosine, which can, you can change it to the sine. So become sine 
pi y over 2. Okay, so then we have pi y. So we just write this thing over. Okay, so now we need something as sure. This is not just it. So why did I say we can use special limit number one? Okay, so let's see. I already said there's the special limit number two, special limit number one, log Pitot's rule, the variable substitution, and the special limit one. So the special limit one hadn't really come in, but it actually would come in now. As here they got okay, here the two fractions. One is pi over two, then here go y, then here is not anything over two, but it's two over pi. And then the denominator sine pi y over two. Okay. Okay, so I had you noticed that this part is the special limit one, which let me write it down. For the special limit one, it is limit x approaches to zero, x over sine x. Okay, sine x over x, x over sine x, both can, which equals to one, which here will equal to one, then become e to the power of negative two over pi. And this is the answer, but if you don't this is the answer, also can. It just that it gonna be a bit well like this. <laughs> you might find out it's easier when you write it like this as in here pi's root then e square. So now after we so we already left one more that I mentioned about, which is the L'Hopital's rule. So the second method I'm mentioning about is the L'Hopital's rule. It's quite easy when you know the L'Hopital's rule. As you see when you use the the variable substitution is so long. Let's see what if we use the L'Hopital's rule. So actually in the future we'll further study about it. Although we keep using this time, but we keep saying that it's the reason is we hadn't explained what it's actually like. Okay. I said future further study means that the future will tell you what is it really like. We'll have more examples on that kind. Half pi x, then here x, which becomes a 1. And, and then here, since you still need to use the chain rule, so this part, the denominator, will have another pi over 2. Then after that, actually you straight away notice this is the answer as 1 over, okay, cosecant square, okay, cosecant square pi over 2x is 1 over sine square pi over 2x, right? So, here, if you sign in 1, it's actually a determinable form. 
which means that because that the sine, I mean pi over two is one, right? So we got one over one, one, then here one over one again, still one. So left this power to one over pi over two, this two it's the denominator of the denominator, so we can reciprocal and then the two will be up there and then again. You can choose either one. So most possibly you'll choose like this as here. You need to write so much. So actually both method with both question we can use two methods. But sometimes, for example, like the first question is super simple, but the second question, you need to see whether would you use this kind, which will become very, very complicated, long, or you just use this kind, which will make it just as short as the first question. So it's about your mind. So now we'll end here. Next time we'll continue. If you like our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel today for more. And thank you for your watching.